Hi everyone, welcome to the introduction lesson of Cuban Missile Crisis. For today's lesson, it's more of an introduction before we dive in straight into the series of events itself. On 14 October 1962, US U-2 spy plane photographed launch pads of medium and intermediate range ballistic missiles that were being constructed by Russians on Cuba. This was very worrying because this means that these missiles could fire into the United States with a range of 1,000 missiles, giving Russians the capacity to strike cities deep within the United States. Hence, for today's lesson, we are actually going to take a look at how things turn out this way. But let's start from the very beginning. The Cuban Missile Crisis, 14 October to 8, 28 October 1962. Why did the situation worsen into the Cuban Missile Crisis on 14 October 1962? In order for us to understand how and why this situation led to the, led to the current uh, to the Cuban Missile Crisis, it's important for us to take a look at three aspects. One is the strategic importance of Cuba to the United States. Second is the tensions between USA and Cuba, as well as the roles of external powers in the whole situation itself. Right, so where is Cuba? Cuba, as you can see in the photo, is an area that is colored in red. It has very close proximity to the United States, which means that it can either be an ally or a threat or a foe. Cuba had strategic and economic importance to the United States. The island was a playground for rich American tourists and most of Cuba's assets were owned by U.S. corporations. They were just 100 miles away from Florida, and they're very near to American naval base, the Guantanamo base. Now, as said just now, Cuba has, is very important in terms of its proximity to the United States because it's just 180 kilometers away from Florida, which means that Cuba could be a helpful ally or deadly foe, especially because of the fact that it is a gateway to the Caribbean islands. Thus, in the late 1950s to early 1950s, Cuba ended up becoming a deadly foe. As spoken just now, Cuba also has strategic and economic importance to the United States, especially in the sugar and tobacco industries. U.S. corporations owned up to 40% of raw sugar productions. Hence, it was very important to ensure the political, economic, and social stability of Cuba to bring about economic growth of the United States. Now, Cuba was also very important very important to the United States in terms of military itself. As spoken just now, Cuba was just 100 miles off the coast of US Florida, which means that Cuba was in close proximity and was a gateway into the Caribbean islands. US had always viewed Latin America and the Caribbean as its backyard and was dominant power in the region. It was an unwritten rule of United States policy that U.S. communist states must not be allowed to establish themselves so close to America's own borders. Hence, USA had to safeguard its relations with Cuba, fearing that Cuba could be exploited to threaten USA as seen in the Monroe Doctrine, which essentially warned the imperial European powers at the time against interfering in the affairs of newly independent states or potential American territories. At the same time, Cuba had a lot of economic importance to America because there's a lot of U.S. companies that were invested very heavily into Cuba's sugar and tobacco industries. So for example, U.S. bought a lot of lands to build plantations and factories. So by 1926, American companies owned 60% of Cuban sugar industry. They also invested heavily into the infrastructure to support the, their economic interests. Thus, America had established a pro-U.S. government in Cuba to ensure that they are always able to support their interests in the island itself. So how would the 1823 Monroe Doctrine actually impact U.S. and Cuba relations? In summary, U.S. was always looking for ways to forge closer ties with its neighbors. The Monroe Doctrine motivated the United States to closely monitor the development of the Caribbean islands and also to ensure that the European countries did not get themselves involved or interfere into these countries. 
So what tensions already existed between Cuba and the United States? America, there was a lot of American political influence in Cuba. USA frequently intervened to protect its interests in Cuba, which means that no matter what, they will always establish pro-US government that will support US interests, even if it means giving the support to General Batista. Cuba used to be ruled by General Batista, who was hugely unpopular due to his corrupt and dictatorial ways, which led to Fidel Castro, this is him, leading a revolution to overthrow him. Now, to be honest, initially this revolution wasn't seen as communist in nature, and historians only believe that Castro became communist in 1960 or 1961. But to be honest, some of Castro's actions upset USA's long-standing practices in Cuba, which seemed to confirm Cuba's alignment with USSR later on. So what exactly did he do? He actually rolled out policies that served to threaten US presence in Cuba. So for example, he sought new market for sugar, especially in Soviet markets. He also implemented the land reform law, which would significantly reduce U.S. land ownership because of his attempts to break up private estates. Hence, it was in the interest of the American investments to remove Castro before further damage was done for the United States. But of course, it really didn't help that Castro would later on strike a friendship with the new Soviet leader Khrushchev. Now at this point, US now increasingly saw Cuba as a communist state at her doorstep and a threat to the entire Western Hemisphere. So what did the US do? At this point, US started retaliating against Cuba's policy. They aimed to weaken Castro's power that resulted in souring the US-Cuba long-standing relationship. It's really like an action-reaction thing, so US pressured its companies not to protest Soviet oil, Cuba ended up nationalizing the oil refineries. US reduced sugar import, so as a result, Cuba signed trade agreement with Soviet. Cuba later on would nationalize all US companies from August 1960, so in retaliation in November, US placed embargo on US exports to Cuba. Cuba would then later on look to the Soviet Union for help, and the Soviet Union stepped in to help. This escalated all the way to January 1961, where U.S. broke off diplomatic ties with Cuba, which was a turning point. Why was it a turning point? Because, at this point, U.S. started to attempt to remove Castro from power. The first example here is the Bay of Pigs invasion that happened on 17 April 1961, which was a huge embarrassment and a huge fiasco. So the aim was that the U.S. government wanted to overthrow Castro by training anti-Castro rebels, supply them with knowledge and military supply, and plan to land them in the Bay of Pigs. The U.S. government believed that their arrival and attack will cause the rest of the Cuban population to rise up together with the rebels against Castro. But unfortunately, the whole operation was defeated within two days, and the local rebellion which they thought will happen didn't take place because Castro was popular with the Cubans at that point of time. So to be honest, it was a humiliating attempt for the United States. But of course, the United States didn't give up just like that. They tried again via the Operation Mongoose in November 1961, which was a secret program carried out by the CIA agents to remove communism from in Cuba. This is a sign that USA was actually stepping up effort to remove Castro from power. The continuing US foreign policy that kept failing was an equal embarrassment on the failure of the US foreign policy. But to be honest, it is also a very clear sign to Cuba that look, USA will continuously try to overthrow Castro away from power which is why Cuba ended up signing a formal alliance with the Soviet Union. Because especially after the failed Bay of Pigs invasion, Castro was convinced that there will be future large-scale invasion by the United States. 
So the Soviet Union was a good choice because USSR was a rival to the USA and hence they knew that USSR would definitely assist Cuba. Remember the friendship that Castro had with Khrushchev? Now, this further cemented the deal, especially so when Khrushchev had supported Cuban's open criticism of the United States in the UN General Assembly in 1960. So this formalized the Soviet-Cuban relationship which threatened US security significantly because of proximity. Now, let's recap the rules played by external powers in the Cuban Missile Crisis. First is the Americans. It's the United States who kept trying to remove Castro from power from the Bay of Pigs invasion to the Operation Mongoose because they wanted to reinstate a pro-US government in Cuba that would continue to support US military and economic interests in the region. So in short, they wanted to ensure that this pro-United States government will continue supporting US selfish needs. Of course, the outcome, as we all know it, that it was a huge fiasco, United States was greatly humiliated and this simply pushed Castro into the arms of USSR. Cuba had a, Cuba had a formal alliance with the Soviet Union and this was a result of the Bay of Pigs invasion and Operation Mongoose. At this point, Castro requested for military aid from the USSR. By 1962, there were 42,000 Russian troops on Cuba and Russians began to build sites for ballistic missiles on the island. Now, the Russians claimed that the construction of missile sites was partly a response to Castro demands and requests for additional protection. So if you think about it in this sense, the aggressive policy of the United States towards Cuba was the cause for the Cuban Missile Crisis. Castro's appeal to the USSR for protection was rational in view of subsequent American efforts to continuously destabilize his government. The Soviet Union was therefore a logical choice for Cuba to seek an alliance against the United States in the current point of time. So in 1961, Castro formally turned communist. Cuba established formal relationship with the communist bloc of countries, and the Caribbean islands therefore became a region of heightened uncertainties for the United States. So, in summary, the reasons why the Cuban Missile Crisis happened had to do with many underlying problems between both USA and own economic investments in Cuba had carried out unfavorable and antagonistic policies against Cuba. The Cubans, on the other hand, under the leadership of Fidel Castro, had introduced threatening economic policies that affected U.S. investments that resulted in economic retaliations. This then pushed Cuba to look for a new ally in Soviet Union that placed the threat of nuclear missiles on Cuba in 1962. So this is just a summary of the different situations or different series of events that happened before the real Cuban Missile Crisis happened in the first place.